welcome. It's Monday. Well, Yuki is in the studio today. We'll see how long he behaves. As you can see, he's already getting into trouble over there. Hey guys, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Oh my goodness, what is Yuki up to? <laughs> Can you guys see me? Yes. Hey, Amy. Hey, Sammy. Hey, Diane. Hmm. I feel like I'm not quite awake. I had my coffee, but I still feel kind of groggy today. I've been working really hard getting ready for my stepmother. I mean, my stepmother, my stepdaughter's visit today. Hey, Robin. Let's see, I'm just chatting with my guests backstage. Good morning. So what is new with everyone? What are your plans for the upcoming holiday? I did, I got it all decorated up for Christmas. Just a little bit of decorating. Yes, Yuki is supervising today. So the cats have not been allowed in my studio for a couple months now because it's been so messy in here and just, you know, hordes of dolls. And then Yuki would just wreak havoc and break things. But I've been trying to get it all cleaned up because my stepdaughter is coming um, in a few days and she's going to want to craft with me. So I had the door jar and the next thing I know I've got cats up on top of the cabinet and Yuki's sitting there like, don't kick me out, mom. I'm too cute. You're going out to eat, Shelly. That sounds wonderful. Robin is raking leaves. <laughs> That's awesome. Very fall, fall festive. Diane is getting ready for Thanksgiving. I'm ordering in this year. We ordered in last year too, but it was just me and Chuck. So um, two of his daughters are coming. We're gonna have Thanksgiving out on the patio. And so I just figure it'll be easier just to order in and do it that way. Oh my goodness. So yeah, so I've got two cats on top of the cabinet and then Yuki messing around doing whatever he's doing back there, but he was supervising me this morning when I was doing a little crafting. Sammy, you're going to visit your dad. That's awesome. Yes, you guys, please like my video. Thank you, Amy. So give my video a like and subscribe to my channel, all that good stuff. And I am monetized now. So if anyone feels so inclined to show me a little support with super stickers, super chats, I don't even know what all that stuff is, but I appreciate you guys. Um, when you do support me, it's totally not necessary, but it, that feature is there and available if you are so inclined. So yeah, I am gonna go ahead and bring our guest in and we're gonna kick the show off and get started. I feel like I need more caffeine, but all right, Morley, I'm about to bring you in. Let's see if this works. Can you see me now? I cannot. Oh my goodness. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Well, and I've got my camera on. I've unmuted everything. I've given permission. So maybe we're just going to be the mysterious audio experience. Oh gosh. Hmm. Let me just see. Do you want to try going out and coming back in and doing that whole little setup thing where it says test your camera and your I can. It says FaceTime HD camera. That must be the camera it's using. Let me do that. I'll back out, try it again, and come okay. back 
and let you know. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. All right. All right. I'll help you out by taking you out. So we did practice yesterday, you guys. This is Morley's kind of first virtual experience um, here. So we did practice it and everything worked. So hopefully we'll be able to get him back in because he's got to be able to see me. He's got to be able to see me because, you know, I have surprises to show. Um, Morley can't see me. That's the problem. He could only hear me and not see me. So we got to have him be able to see me because, you know, I have surprises. And that's all part of it. So, I mean, if we have to do it with just him and I on audio, then maybe I can send him a picture of what I have. So... Maybe I'll go ahead and take a picture just in case we end up having to do it that way. Okay, let me do that. I'll go ahead and take a picture and then I could text it to him if we have to do it that way. Okay. All right, let's see if we can get him in here. Amy, can you, can you see me now? I can hear you too. Oh, and see me? Yes, both. <laughs> okay, good. Woo. Hello. Right. Hello, Amy's sure. friends. Let me get out of the way for a second. I was working on a plan. I just wanted meeting. to show everybody the little setup I did with Aww. some of my mom, Ruth's stuff and her pictures. And because it's just the angle, I wanted you to see that. And I'll go into some detail later. But now it. I'm back and we're live. Yay, we're live. So you guys, I'm super excited to introduce you all to one of my best friends in the world, Morley. He is amazing. He, I don't, don't want to get emotional, but he has been with me through so many journeys. And gosh, it's been, what, 11 years? Since 2009. Yeah, so I think that's 12 years. The volume went down amazingly a lot. Can you turn up your volume a little bit? Um, it's not. I it lost your volume. Unbelievable. Yeah. Oh no! Sorry, guys. We're gonna have a little bit of a tech challenge. Well, now I'm back. Okay, That's good. Okay. okay, I think we fixed it. Yeah, you can. Um, 2009, when we were doing Just Imagine in NoHo at the NoHo Variety Arts, I had heard about this amazing woman, Amy who dressed in various costumes as a mermaid. You never knew how she was going to show up to the show. And when she showed up, she danced upstairs to her entire show. She was just imagined spirit animal. <laughs> and, and we met the first day and we became friends instantly. And that's a yep. fact. Yes. Well, tell us about just imagine and then we'll backtrack all the way back to the beginning of your music career, but go ahead and share the magical experience that is or was just imagine sure and that began i had a great gig at the silent movie theater on fairfax which is not far from canners which is very convenient particularly when you're hungry and i played as part of this uh red cross benefit chris carter did a beatles movie night and i played keyboards be, while people were walking in, I played instrumental Beatles songs and he would show great movies and all the money went to a great cause. And one day somebody videotaped me and that person was John D. M. Moore. And he sent it to a couple people. He sent it to Chris Carter and he sent it to Tim Piper. And Tim Piper was so impressed by what he saw. He gave me a call and said, I'm putting together this show. Would you like to do it? And I was intrigued by it. It took a while for it to happen, but we started rehearsing. We had an amazing band, Don Poncher on drums, Don Butler on guitar, Greg Piper on bass and vocals, and Tim, a great rhythm player and singer as John Lennon. And we opened it in the NoHo Variety Arts and 99 Seat Theater, and we kept selling it out every night. And show continued. We went to Studio City. And while we were in Studio City at a great theater, Las Vegas came to check us out. 
and we wound up taking that show to Planet Hollywood. Amazing experience for a couple months in Las Vegas where I'd grown up and we went behind the curtain, which I always had seen shows and kind of got to experience the magic from the other side. So 10 years, I did just imagine we just finished about a year ago, last February, great experience and a lot of Beatle, John Lennon magic baked into that cake. Yeah, yeah. So, so was, 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 um, we have we the have echo. the echo. Let me see if I turn it down if it helps. Does that help at all? Testing, testing. Yeah. Good. I think it's better. So yeah, Tim Piper is an amazing tribute artist to John Lennon, and I met him probably ten years before I met Morley and had been following his journey from little dive bars to big theaters, doing his John Lennon tribute show. And it's much more than a tribute. It's like, it's, it's, I don't know how to describe it. It's a magical experience. Um, it brought so much joy to so many people, the music, the story of John Lennon. It was, it was kind of like a play mixed in with a concert. And it was something that um, brought me great joy um, during many years of my life. And yeah, I would go to the show almost every night. We lost Morley, but he'll be back every night that they played. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, and it was just such a magical experience. Anyone who went like wanted to keep going and going and going. It's like experiencing the music of John Lennon and the Beatles um, on an emotional level because you're there. It's live. This is so weird. A little top hat has appeared. That's <laughs> supposed to happen. Serendipity. Like where, what is this and where did it come from? It just like. I love that. It ended up like in this little bin with Bobo. I love I just, when that happens. I just looked over and it was there with Bobo. So maybe Bobo <laughs> wants to wear the top hat to match you. There we go. So he, yeah, I think that's what it's about. He yes, wants I love music. Bobo. And, Bobo and you know, I, I want before we get back to just imagine. I want to yeah. say how much I appreciate your streaming and these live shows that you do and all the creativity I watched during the pandemic, everybody, I just want to give props. And I think this is a correlation of the arts for you. There's so many aspects of the parts that I know you that are now into these streams, your creativity, just being positive and connecting people. And I want to say how much I appreciate it, even though you will see, I'm not one of those people that are part of the group that are selling things, but I really appreciate you having me on today. Of course. Thank you. So anyway, that, that is just imagine that's how Morley and I met, but let's go all the way back to the beginning of your music career and tell us about, you know, how you got started, the bands you played in the songs. Tell us your journey. So I'll give you the reader's digest version. I think when I was 16, I played Clark high school's assembly in front of the whole school. And my mother, Ruth, and my dad were perceptive enough. They gave me a microphone that I could put into a real piano. And this was in the early 70s, maybe 70 or 71, really before technology. So for that uh, assembly, I played Summer Rain by Johnny Rivers, which is a great song. And in the middle of it, where he says, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, I started playing that song and took a big solo. And at the end of the song, the entire school stood up. And I thought, you know what, I can do this. This is something, and of course, really cute girls started talking to me afterwards, so it was a win-win. <laughs> and that was really the beginning. And I did a lot of theater too, and I think that those are the two aspects. Theater is kind of the correlation of all of the arts under one place. And I think that's the great thing about Just Imagine is that it's, we played all these great theaters in Reykjavik and Cancun and in Chile and Canada. And it was just amazing seeing these theaters and being able to play John Lennon and Beatle music. I think the next thing that happened besides being in a great theater department in my senior year where they let me write music for some of the plays as well as be in them. So that was really a good spot. And um, I think where it jumps forward is one of my close friends that was managing my high school band was named Dennis Turner. 
and he was in barely in his 20s. He went on to manage George Benson and Peter, Paul, and Mary, and his biggest act was Kenny G, because they would go to the White House two or three times a, a year. But when Dennis managed us, he introduced me to Maxine Sellers, who was a folk country artist on Folkways, and she had one album out on Capitol. This was 1975, and she loved my playing. So I went and kind of played at her house in Beechwood Canyon. She said, we've got to start rehearsing right away. And my first professional gig was Monday nights in Studio City, right next to the theater, where just imagine would be a decade and a half later, the Blah Blah Cafe. And we played every Monday night. I made $25 cash every night. And I was really raking it in, in the beginning, as you can tell. And our biggest gig is that we played the Troubadour when there were seats and chairs. We opened for Ramblin' Jack Elliott, who'd just gotten off the Dylan tour. And it was such a magical night because I knew everybody who had played that same piano. I got to play with Maxine that night. And the place was packed. And The Hollywood Reporter did a great review of the show. And that was really my introduction to saying this is what I want to do. It was such a great experience. And then by some chance, the singer-songwriter I was introduced to, John Raskin, and he was a great songwriter. We started writing new wave songs. They got faster. Coffee and Stimulants got faster. And we put out a Bugs Tomorrow album on Casablanca when I was in my mid-20s. And that led to me playing with a band called Andy and the Rattlesnakes, who played around town a long time. Certain members of that band were in the Red Hot Chili Peppers and Frank Zappa's band and then the Bone Daddies. And the day that Andy decided he'd played too long in L.A. and went to New York to become a doctor of music was the day that Tim McGovern, formerly of the Motels, and Roger Prescott of the Pop came to see the last Rattlesnake show. And Tim was so impressed with the band that he took all of us and turned us into Burning Sensations, who in 1983 had a MTV video called Belly of the Whale. And that did really well. And we toured and traveled and played for a while. And eventually that led me into meeting and playing with a few other artists, Stu and Heidi, who eventually went to New York and won a Tony for Passing Strange. And that led me into playing one gig with Drama Rama, where I played two songs and eventually wound up as their called Secret Weapon. And I've been playing with them on and off now for 15 years. And I'm on their newest record called Color TV. I'm really proud of it. And all of that, a lot of it happened during the year of the pandemic where I couldn't go or do anything, a lot of magical things seemed to happen during that time and allowed me to continue playing music. Even through last month in September, Burning Sensations got back together. We played three shows with Drama Rama in September, and that's the first time we played these songs in 30 years, and that was a magical experience. That's awesome. Well, I love how even though there's been so much tragedy with the pandemic, so many of us have found the positivity um, and our pivot, as you have taught me to pivot um, during the pandemic and have been able to manifest magical things um, despite everything else that's going on. So um, we will get to pivoting and positivity soon, but I wanted to... Um, just mentioned that Belly of the Whale was a song that really struck, um, you know, or it's, it really inspired me as a child because I saw it on, of all places, the Disney Channel on DTV. Yes. So that's how I knew Belly of the Whale, but it was such a fun uh, song. It was so positive and upbeat um, that, yeah, I just loved well, it. So. Well, I wanted to say that about that the song was on MTV for a window in the summer, but when Disney purchased the song and put it on their television and their compilation, it whole other kids and generations discovered it like a decade later. And we had another second song. We had a song in the Repo Man soundtrack, 
which was Harry Dean Stanton, some great actors about LA and the punk scene. And that song, the movie came out, it didn't do really well at all. But once that movie went to cable, the, the desire for it went crazy and they had to re-edit it and put it out again for TV. And then they put new versions out and it's now a successful movie. And that song, Pablo Picasso, people know that we're in that soundtrack that didn't even know we did belly of the whale. So that was a second blessing for that band. Wow. And those are the two songs we feature when we play live. We just played the Greek theater and then we played a lovely venue uh, in Sarasota called the Mountain Winery. And we played uh, Humphreys in San Diego. Just an incredible experience. Wow. Well, I am um, blessed that I did get to see you perform with Drama Rama, you know, many years back. That was fun. It was and fun. I did want to mention also that Morley was there on my first date with my husband because I took my husband on my first date to see just imagine that was our first date. He met me at the theater and um, I wanted to be surrounded by all of my brothers, my band brothers, um, because I was so nervous. And so Morley got to witness our first date and be there on that first night, which he um, thought it was magical connection from the beginning. Right. Amy talk for a second. I have mm -hmm. to plug in the adapter. So take cover for okay, just no a worries, no worries. Okay, good. So I think I solved the mystery of the top hat. So I'm in the process of cleaning up uh, all the Halloween stuff, right? And I had this guy in a little assemblage and look, he's missing something on top of his head. And there are teeth marks. The mystery is becoming solved. So there are teeth marks on the hat and it seems as though Yuki pulled the top hat off of the pumpkin man and brought it to me. So I guess Yuki was excited about Morley coming to be our guest today and brought the top hat out, bit it off and brought it out. So um, Morley is known for his signature top hat. So we'll let Bobo wear it. Very cute. And I so, see that we have, we have a special guest cat that appeared right behind oh, us. Oh, that's Tanya. Yeah. So uh, Yuki apparently brought this top hat to us. See the teeth marks in it. So she Talk he about knew, being in tune. He knew you were coming. All right. Let me have to get yeah. up there. All Let's right. See. Make sure that this is getting power, and then I'll know that I won't. Yes. Okay. I'm, we're recharging. Everything is good. Okay. So, yeah, we were talking about how from the beginning, uh, the first night I met my husband, you felt that it was a magical connection. Oh, I, I think everyone in that room could feel it. We were all very happy, but it seemed like that entire night happened because you and Chuck were meeting. It had that feeling about it. Yeah. And we were all very thrilled to witness it because we felt this was a really a strong bond. And it was a great thing to be doing Beatles songs while you and Chuck were having your first date. Somehow it just, and, and if I can just say that one of the great concerts of all time that I ever saw was Three Dog Night at the Convention Center, 1970. And I did not have a great seat that night, but I ran up to the front and I saw so many amazing tunes in that band. I'm such a band guy, not only three incredible singers, but just one of the great rock bands is Three Dog Night. And I had a chance to hear that. They did It's For You with those three-part harmonies. And you better believe that impacted every single thing that I wanted to do in music. Yeah. Harmonies. and So very synchronistic that there was Chuck and you at our Just Imagine show. After yeah. my Three Dog Night journey, I worshipped those first two albums growing up so much. I played them out. I played them as much as Beatle albums unquestionably. Well, I would love to jump into uh, telling us about your family, your childhood, and, you know, and obviously we want to focus on your mom, Ruth, because you sure. share some of her uh, vintage treasures with us. And I um, you to see my mom. And her. I'm looking forward to getting to know more. Oh my gosh! What I never knew that. Soon, but I'll be back. I'll be back. 
I never knew your mom had the hat thing going on too. So this runs in the family. Yes, it did. And you know what? She would always comment about the size of my hat. And she would say to me, Morley, you know, there are hats that are much smaller for your head that might <laughs> be a little bit more because she thought they were, I, you know, this is my mom. This is a shoe that of mine that she gold bronzed. And this is saying a lot. And the second shoe has gone missing and it was very concerning for her, but this is, if you can believe that I used to be that small. <laughs> That's awesome. I remember when they used to bronze the shoes, you guys, how many of you have baby shoes that were bronzed? And I want to say, I think the most precious thing I found is this Israeli at the Yiddish card deck that was in her 1970, 1969 Mahjong table. These cards are from 19... 74. They're in Yiddish and they come from a company that made Yiddish card games so you could learn the language and still play cards at the same time. And it gives wow. interesting Israeli names for them. And they're they're all really cool. And that was one of the treasures I found. I uh I also wanted to show these are my my mother, my the smallest girl looking at my grand one of my grandfathers is my mom. My aunt Sari is the woman of the far right, one of my uncles in the middle, and those are my two grandfathers with the big beard. I've never met them. And the one woman behind Sherry on the left is my grandma, Bubby Toby. Wow. So I wanted to show that. That's my history. And I wanted to say also my dad's history, Marilyn and Shelly, my two close cousins, they've passed away, but their daughter, Shauna, is just my favorite relative. They've been so, were so great to my mother. And appreciating my mother, I wanted to talk about VITAS, which was the medical organization that allowed my mother to stay home for the last two and a half, three years and allowed me to take care of her. And they helped and came and Gave great care, and she lived to be 97 and a half. She was almost 98, and she lived a great, long, happy life. And that's what, really, I was kind of blessed to be able to take care of her the last few years, because most of the time I was auditioning for shows or getting on some plane and doing gigs. Mm -hmm. So taking care of her gave me that bond to do for her what she had always looked after me every minute was really making sure that my brother and myself were okay. And the pandemic allowed you to be staying at home and have well, that time. It was office. perfect. And you know, I had a lot of practice though a year before because I was protecting her from any type of respiratory thing be a year and a half before COVID. Mm -hmm. So I just had to kind of fine tune a couple of those aspects. I was already keeping her home. And I had my doctor saying, listen, you know, be careful. You have to make sure that you have all your shots for flu because the last thing you want to do is get your mom sick. So I was already in that mode. And we did a great job. My mother passed from her from her long-term breathing things but had nothing to do with COVID, I'm very happy to say. Right, right. Well, tell us about your mom. Who was Ruth? And... Tell us, share some special memories and some special things about her. Um, you know, my mother, the best way I could describe my mom, she was so excited about Just Imagine that she bought 50 tickets for the first show and gave it away to the relatives and friends. And that, in a way, is who my mom is. That tells you she was born in Minneapolis. Uh, she met my dad there, Victor. And she was a school teacher at one point. She, people just loved her. She had just something about her that you wanted to hang out and get to know her. And I think in her perfect mind, she, at the beginning, she would have loved to have met, to have met a nice Jewish girl and settled down and be a lawyer and a doctor. But those things weren't in the cards. And after a time, she decided I was going to support Morley regardless. I may not completely believe in what he's doing. But that changed too. But you know what? My positivity and pivoting and those things came from her 
really wanting to be connected and a people person. And, you know, I, I sit in her room and in her chair every day and I feel taking care of her dog, George, you know, that's a good way I'm honoring her memory. And in some ways, I guess I was given the aspect of one of the uh, 10 commandments, you know, honor your mom and dad. And I actually got to do that. So I appreciate it. So uh, your mom really loved fashion. Didn't she have a Oh, yeah. she was a styler. Yeah. Yes. And let's see, let me show you something funny. Okay. This is really just one of the outside of my mom. I've never saw her wear this, but, oh this, but this is really a great example of my eclectic mom's outfits. And I remember when my band uh, with Stu and Heidi opened for Blondie at the Fillmore, uh, no, at the Wiltern, and I looked out in the front row in the pit, and there was my mom in a leopard skin outfit, with a hat and the glasses, and she totally looked like some Palm Springs superstar. That's and awesome. I, you know, and that was just really, that's telling my mom, she always dressed great. She always looked great and had a, you know, outstanding collection. You know, if we ever do this again, we'll go to the living room and there's a whole collection of different photos that also tell a different story. And I, I just brought a few things to just to give you the vibe. Right. Well, let's see what else you have brought. Sure. Sure. You know, she loved, uh, she loved her collection of little dogs. She loved these things and she had many of them. Oh, and her beanie babies. Yeah. Her beanie babies. She was totally collecting and, and thought she had a box of more. I have not found them. And she also collect type of artifacts like this are around the house. And I'm not really even sure how long or old they are. It's been there forever. I um, think it's 70s. Yeah, it I might. would say definitely. That's what it looks like. So there are a lot of things like that. She has two closets full of clothes, which I have not gone through. And- um, Well, let me help you with that one day. <laughs> yes. And you know, I was going to even say to you, it would be very helpful and if there are things here that you can utilize, then that's also something that you would be more than welcome to. I would be honored. Yeah, I, I really, that was one of the thoughts I had when we were going to do this. And I thought, you know, you're the perfect person to come here and not only being able to go through it, but to identify even what decade, because I'm a little bit clueless when it comes to the dates or decades of certain things. And I know she has some classic stuff that okay. you would enjoy. That's awesome. So tell us what it was like growing up um, in your culture and your mom and how all that played into your upbringing. Sure. I, you know what, when I think about being nervous before shows, it's only happened two or three times. And the first time was the evening, Friday evening of my bar mitzvah in Las Vegas, where I had to play the organ through the service. So here I was, 13 years old. I remember my feet almost didn't quite reach the pedals. And what I remember about it is kind of, this is kind of a metaphor of my upbringing, that I was so nervous that my foot on the volume pedal kept going up and down during the service. And the rabbi in the counter would look at me and saying, shh. Like I couldn't help it. It was nerves. Right. And so that's what I remember. And that kind of describes my upbringing. I was not really a person that focused on the religion, but I went through the process. My folks, I was bar mitzvah. Of course, there was the bris, which was, you know, the first experience. And then there was the bar mitzvah. And I was, you know, I think that uh, I socially, I really enjoyed AZA, which was a hang where we would do one night a week. And even though there was a meeting and rules of order, and it was really a social thing where you would play basketball and there was a piano there. And I used to play that piano when we were just hanging out. And I think that also really influenced something that I wanted to do the rest of my life. And my parents were conservative, but more reformed. So they weren't overly pushing it on me, except for being bar mitzvahed. And I kind of feel more, I drifted into 
spirituality, the interconnection of everything. I think that the thread of all religions have aspects of truth. And then if you pull away the organization and you just appreciate the spiritual aspects, it will connect us and to the things and places where we really want to be. Mm -hmm. And you, you were mentioning to me yesterday when we were chatting that your mom was always trying to like fix you up with nice Jewish girl. Oh yeah. Uh, yes. You know what? I think that that without a doubt, and you know, they were always were very sweet, but I think that in my mind, I thought that connecting with people from other religions was both educational and I think we balanced each other out. I think there was a harmony uh, with it, but she would have preferred, I'm sure, marrying a nice Jewish girl and being a lawyer and doctor because that's just what you did. But I had other ideas in mind. And if I can just give my props to my wonderful girlfriend, Susan Devlin, who I'm going to see Thanksgiving. It's going to be our first Thanksgiving in over two years together for various reasons. But we're really excited to spend some time with each other. That's wonderful. And didn't you meet Susan back when you were in a band? Were you guys in a band together? Oh, okay. No, no, that's interesting. But <laughs> that's funny because uh, that had happened a time or two. But Susan and I were in a theater company called Firebird Theater Company, which is okay, a important part. Yes, she was an actress, and I played strange percussion sounds. It's a children's theater company, and we would do shows in schools throughout Southern California and Orange County. And it's funny because I would be playing a gig the night before and get home way after midnight and have to be in Orange County at 7 a.m. to do shows for kids. And that's how we met. And, you know, we went out and were very close for a while in the 80s and then drifted apart. She eventually got married and then uh, was divorced eventually. And then I was wanting her to come to a Just Imagine show for a long time. And she was taking care of her mother and was the first person that I knew that did that full time. And her mother was full on dementia. So I experienced, I was there as support for her when we met. But anyway, she came to see a Just Imagine show. There was definitely, she loved the show. We had a bond together and we hung out that night, the first time that she came back. And we've been together ever since. And it was nine years last October. Well, I just love Susan, and of course, I love Cat Jackson. She's crazy about you too. Oh yeah, crazy. Yeah, she would want me to say hello, and she loves your pictures, and she misses some of the pictures of the cats because you're so busy doing other things. Right, right, right. But Yuki gets to have a little. Yes, cameo here she's going to be episode. happy. With her. She's going to be um, happy. With her. I think it's his first cameo in the vintage dish, so you know it's synchronistic. Yes. Um. And do you want to tell us a little bit about your brother? Was your brother an actor? He didn't become a doctor lawyer either, right? No, no. My brother has a very interesting path, and we were very, very close. He passed a while ago due to a brain aneurysm. But my brother, instead of going into music, he went into Foley artistry for films. And what they do is that they create all the found sounds that you don't hear on computers. Um, it, they walk on glass, they'll break things, they'll pound things, and that's the sound effects you hear. For instance, when you hear a motorcycle falling, you may not be hearing that motorcycle falling. You're going to hear the Foley creating multiple tracks of live sound that are then incorporated into the film. And my brother did 85 films for Warner Brothers. Some of them are films you've seen many times, from Schindler's List to... Uh, Perfect Storm to Shawshank Redemption. If you stay for the credits of, if you go and do a search on Kevin Bartnoff on I, in the movie uh, credits, you'll see all his films. And if you stay to the end of the film when any of them come on, you'll see my brother's name, Kevin Bartnoff. And every year during his birthday, I link all his films and his poetry. He had a great poetry mag in the 90s called The Moment. And uh, we were really close. We were in two different aspects of entertainment, but the thread between what we both did was also something that I think we both related to. Mm -hmm. 
That's beautiful. So I would love for you to talk to us um, about pivoting and positivity and some core values that are important to you because you have been very instrumental in me and helping me to look for my pivot during challenging situations. Uh oh. Uh oh, Morley Scott. Tech issues. Okay, this is this is good. How was that? How was my trip? See me next fall. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, I don't think about his headphones. This is my first attempt at this. Yeah, Morley has not streamed live yet ever. So StreamYard is not the easiest. But I will be back in a second. To have her first experience. Um, Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're almost back. I'm back. Sorry okay. about that. How was that? That was really an entertaining experience. I the, what I was going to do to make me be able to tell this story is to show this DVD, which is the Mayor of the Sunset Strip, Rodney Bingenheimer's wow. documentary, and that kind of tells. It illustrates pivoting and positivity, which is not helping my connection. But um, here's the story. I had written a song called For the Time Being, and that song was written. It's okay. Yeah, oh, thank you. That song was written because... I had been giving songs to Rodney on K-Rock for a really long time. Not my songs, just bands and things that I thought he would like. And he kind of looked to me to give him certain things on the street. And one day I gave him a song of mine, which was called The Law of Attraction, which just tells about pivoting and focusing on that what you want and intend to have a perfect day and joy will surround you. And when I gave him that song, he said, it's about time. And then he started playing it and other radio stations started playing it. And it was so inspiring that I wrote for the time being about focusing on that what you want, pivoting from the things that you're not wanting and appreciate the blame away. That was the pivotal line in the song. So flash forward, they're making the Rodney movie and I submitted for the time being to be considered for the soundtrack to one of the record producers, Chris Carter, who's a founding member of Drama Rama, but now has Beatle radio shows on multiple networks, including Little Stevens, Beatle Channel, and on KLOS, which he's had for a long time. And he's a great friend of mine. And I gave him that song. And about four months later, he called me and apologized. He said, that song slipped through the cracks. And I'm really sorry that it didn't make the soundtrack. And, you know, I was so connected to that movie anyway that I decided not to be frustrated about it. And I continued to go to the screenings and I saw where my song could have gone in the end credits. And I thought this is where it could have gone, but I'm still going to appreciate the ride. And about a week later, I was working at Screen Actors Guild, which was my job for about 18 years. And the phone rang and I had a strange feeling about it when it rang and it was Chris Carter. And he said, you're not going to believe what I'm going to tell you. He said, the director did not like the song in the end credits. It was too slow. And they're creating a separate session. And we're going to go in and put your song for the time being into the end credits of the movie. Exactly the area where I saw it, where it could have gone. Wow. And that is, I appreciated the blame away. And the song wound up in the movie. And that's the best example I can give you of pivoting to having something happen that you want and having specific proof that my philosophy worked. Right. That's, that's just amazing. So yeah, you and I have experienced many examples together of 
manifestation, synchronicity, um, pivoting. I mean, this top hat appearing is just like one example of it. I, yes. that I did not plan it there. It was just like all of a sudden there's a top hat. So yes. um, it's all about energy and um, just, you know, believing, believe to achieve, like all of those things. Um, so many challenges in my life and Morley would would be there to uplift me and help me find my pivot and then point out to me like see there it is you you know you made this happen you did this so you know we all have that power within us to intend for positive things so yes without a doubt and i think that by being in the moment like my meditation in the last couple of weeks has been about grace and gratitude which seems really simple, but it's so amazing to appreciate every good thing that occurs to you on a daily basis or in this moment. Because if you're thinking about the things that have happened in the past or worried about the future, then you're not in that center of grace and gratitude of the moment, that where you can actually change your mood and your outcome by simply being in a really positive, uplifted state and breathing a lot. Somebody once said that stress is really your body telling you that you don't have enough air and good water in your system to make positive decisions, that you're stressed out and there's no way you're going to come out to a good answer from there. So that's helped me a lot too. Wow. Well, I want to share a keepsake that I have brought today. Um, this was a creation by my Aunt June, who was here earlier. Maybe she still is. And you guys know I have talked about Aunt June many times and how instrumental she was in my life and making me who I am today. So Aunt June raised me on the Beatles. And... I'm grateful for that because it gave me that passion about music, 60s music and the culture and the fashion. And, you know, here I am um, married to my husband. I mean, none of the I wouldn't be doing anything that I'm doing if it hadn't been for my Aunt June. So Aunt June made this for me. I don't know that I can wear it and show it properly, but it is a, a flying glove. So if you guys are familiar with the Beatles Yellow Submarine. Glove. <laughs> this is the flying glove that Aunt June made for me when I was just a little kid. And she made it out of a glove and she embroidered all of these details on here. I mean, look at all the details. Love that. And she even put my name on the back. Really so How I still have this, I don't know. If Aunt June is still here, you can tell us maybe how old I was when you made this. Maybe I was three or four or five. I don't know. But this is flying glove, and I would go around with it on my hand and go, Zoom, flying glove. <laughs> <laughs> I and love that. She also did a whole little um, illustration book of illustrations from the Yellow Submarine. Um, and it was in a spiral notebook. And it is around somewhere i don't know if it's here with me in california in storage or if it's still in georgia but it was all part of aunt june's magic that she gave to me so uh oh no 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 yuki is not allowed to play the flying glove so <laughs> um i wanted to thank you morley so much for being a guest on my show today thank you amy it means so much to me and i hope that um that you've inspired some of our viewers out there. And um, I hope they enjoyed seeing some special treasures from your mom. And I look forward to the day that I can come and help you go through her closet. That yes, you have an open invitation. Thank you for being such a great sister to me, Amy. Of You've been course. really so helpful. And uh, I, you know, I just want to say that, uh, I'm, I feel really lucky that you and I have continued our bond and thank you so much for having the show. And like, I want to give props to all the people that are creating 
and selling their wares online. It's such a great thing that people can do from home. I mean, not only during the pandemic, but forever. And it's been very inspiring to me to see you do your journey. Thank you so much. Well, before you go, I have a special gift that I made for you as a thank you for being here today. And just as a thank you for being my friend all these years. And so sweet. So I made this special doll. It is uh, it's a Ruth angel. It's an angel of your mom. I love that. Oh, she would love that. And the hair color, she would really love that a lot. And Thank I gave her so a little George dog. Look, it's George. And if I can just say the song Dog Georgie by my new band, Randy Californians, is all about Dog George and taking care of my mom and the connection of pets. And if you'll do a search on Morley Bartnoff and the Randy Californians, you can watch the video about Dog George. Features yeah. his barks and his image and his barks and the entire song. <laughs> one day I'll so, figure out how to yeah. keep the sound in. Yeah, don't worry. It'll, it'll happen by the next one. And of course she's in her leopard print and her velvet leopard oh, print. That is so much like her. That is so funny. Thank you, Amy. Very You're sweet. Welcome. So you guys, all of Morley's links are here in the description of the video. We will add the Dog George link as well. But if you would like, you can follow Morley on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Reverb Nation features his music, and you can also find his videos on YouTube here. Yes, at Cause Morley is my... Uh, TV IG, which tells a great history of a lot of my music and the bands I've played with or that I appreciate. Yeah, so on Instagram, yeah, go to his Instagram and click on the IGTV icon and you can find lots of fun footage of Morley as well. Thank so, you so much. Chris, thank you. Have a wonderful week, everyone. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. I will be back. Um, we will not have any sales this week on YouTube, but I will be on Facebook for Black Friday for my sale with Ron Dante of the Archies. That's at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on Facebook. I will post the replay here on YouTube. And then I will be live with a Black Friday sale with my husband, Chuck Negron, formerly of Three Dog Night, on Facebook on Saturday after Thanksgiving. And that is also at 4 p.m. Pacific and 7 p.m. Eastern. And I will post the replay here for you guys to watch on YouTube. So have a wonderful holiday, everyone. Stay safe. Treasure your time with your loved ones. And happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much, Morley. Thanks and again, I'll everybody. See you soon. All right, guys. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.